All right, May 10th blockchain meeting. Um, so let's do the main net check-in. I don't think there's anything really anomalous going on. Um, reward cycle eight just started without any sort of fanfare or any hiccups, so that's nice. Um, our, the reward, the uh, stacks per reward slot though is back down to 70,000. Does anyone know why that might be? Is that just because we've had a, a few big pools in the cooldown phase, but? Yeah, I, I think that there was like some major um, uh, address that, that entered the cooldown phase. Uh. All right, everyone else gets a slightly better APY, I guess. Yeah. Um, I haven't really been watching testnet. Um, what's the status of testnet? Any anything to report? Any anomalies? Actually, before we go to the testnet, uh, just coming back to the minute, mm -hmm. has anyone been looking at um, sort of how full our blocks are relative to the transactions coming in? Uh, like, is that all sort of looking okay? Last I checked, you know, it looked like all of our blocks uh, still had a lot of capacity, and and I was just wondering if anyone has sort of looked further into uh, whether uh, the current miner is doing a good job of packing mempool transactions into blocks. Uh, so I have a tool that um, tracks the state of the chain. I can make it start reporting block fullness, if that would be useful. Actually, I'm curious what other people feel. I, I guess like maybe a bigger question is like, is that a metric that you know we, we should be looking at and looking to optimize um, if at all? Uh, I think it's a metric that would be good to know. Yeah. Cause like, so we have, uh, we have a lot of pending transactions um, and for the most part, they're, they're pending for reasons completely unrelated to um, block fill. Yeah, usually it's like a nonce conflict or something, right? Yeah. Um, um, and so my point. expectation is that like we're not reaching block fill right now, but like if we were, that would be very interesting to know. Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, <laughs> from what I can tell, we're nowhere near our block fill limit. Right. So I'm more, I'm more interested in figuring out, you know, is that a good baseline? Like, do we can we make sense of that? And you know, like given the transactions that happen to be in mempool uh, is our current level of block fail like meeting the expectations based on what we would you know what we know about the system like that's i, I guess what i'm trying to figure out um and and if the conclusion is that you know based on the transactions that we currently have in the mempool or you know some sampling of it that the current level of block fail is expected um then then you know maybe we can just move on but that's kind of what i'm looking to get out of this discussion uh, uh, two, two, two things uh, thank you uh two things to walker um should this, if we do go out on this path, uh, is this something that the foundation should own or hero? Uh, and secondly, um, you know, if we do decide to track this, are there any actionable items we can take with the data? Right, I don't think it's a foundation or hero question just yet. Like once the capability exists, anyone who's running a node can and should do the monitoring, right? And the question is what sort of visibility do we have and what sort of visibility should do we want to have? I don't think we currently have any metrics that are tracking this, for example. Okay, um, just throwing this out there too. Uh, would this be something that's possible with Prometheus metrics to track possibly? Uh, then maybe more of an Aaron question. Um, I'll see why not. Yeah, like, <laughs> I don't know, like, there's, there's metrics that would be useful to have here. And like, block fill is one of them. I don't know if we should be like alerting on it. Um, yeah, it, 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 it's fine. Maybe we can move on. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I'm, I'm opening a can of worms here. Yeah. I, well, if, if any other blockchains are indication, like this is something that gets commonly tracked in like a block explorer, usually as like part of the chain time series data, um, like how full are blocks, what's the transaction fee per compute unit, uh, things like that. So I'd imagine like if we don't do it, someone else will. Yeah. All right. We can, anything we else can on the I'm sorry, what was that? Oh, nothing. I was just saying we can we can move on to the test net. 
All right, what's up? What's new with testnet? I don't know if anything is new. Um, not much happened last week, unless I missed something. Um, there, there was. Um, I, I made a, a small deployment for the um, API for uh, the hackathon. Um, actually, that might have been mainnet, uh, but uh, I, I for, think it was testnet for the socket IO branch. Yeah, I that was testnet. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm sorry. I couldn't remember which one, but, but nothing on my end. Like there's been, uh, no, no changes or, uh, things reported that I've seen. All righty. No news is good news. Let's go ahead and run the report. Uh, Marvin's saying testnet went down for a bit. Really? Yeah, then it go down um, early last week for for just a little while. That was I, so I think I, I ran into that and then some others. So I think what you're referring to is um, when when I did the deployment for uh, for that socket IO uh, for the API. Uh, when we switched from like the blue environment to the green, um, Marvin reported uh, that, that that he detected some downtime. Uh, but we didn't we didn't detect any downtime on our end. Um, so I'm not really sure if there was any downtime at all. Um, there shouldn't have been. Could, could it have just been behind? Uh, yeah, I can't really remember. I thought it was early in last week. Yeah, I, and yeah, I, I, I don't posted think this and some is... other people mentioned it too. Yeah, I think I found a message from May 2nd. So this is not related to the... Um, the post hackathon deployment, Charlie. I think there was something maybe last oh, Sunday or Monday. Mm -hmm. uh, was this like the miner not mining? Yeah, I think you remember last time we had we yeah. talked about you know potential resource exhaustion and uh, then miner funding. Um, oh yeah. This, this is this is probably what that was when you had seen that Marvin. I think this was last Sunday. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It was short duration. It could be. I I just I just remembered it, so I figured it. Yeah. yeah. And so, then we restarted. Uh, I think the miner on Monday morning, um, and we haven't seen the same problem since then. But did we did we reach? I, I remember we reached some conclusion. What was the conclusion? I remember it was not lack of funds, and I also remember it was not resource exhaustion either. Uh, there definitely was a very very low amount of funds. Uh, I can't remember exactly. Charlie and I were looking into that specifically. It, it was set up an alert for that. It was 0 0.05 Bitcoin left in the testnet address. But I thought that there was some confusion between, you know, whether we were looking at the right yeah. address even or not. And if I think, if I remember correctly, the correct, the right minor address actually has sufficient funds. I think it was 16 test, testnet BTC, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I, I think there's an open issue where it's like the RBF logic. Mm. Oh, that's right, that's right, that's right, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, it's issue two six four four, um, and it's solved by restarting the node. Got it. Okay. So we still have to fix that issue. Yes. Got it. Okay. Yeah. That, is, that. is that something that could come up in mainnet? I'm not. What, what, what could, are the RBS? Yes. yes, it could. Yeah. But mainnet. Uh, it it much. stands for replace by fee. Oh. Um, okay. And like, yeah, one of the ways that miners like update a transaction that's in the Bitcoin mempool before it confirms is with replace by fee. Um, if it does it wrong, it can it can enter this state where it never tries to um, mine again. Okay, gotcha. All right, we can we can move on. All right, so six two six four four is going to get fixed in order to stop the uh, testnet miner from accidentally stalling out. It sounds like. Um, reviews in progress. <clears throat> I know we have more PRs in this and just pull up the actual board. Um, I took a look at this read, the uh, stacks message codec, and it looks good to me. I just had a couple of comments. Um, it looks like we're just waiting for a few more approvals. Awesome. Yeah, um, I'll take a look at the comments uh, today. Cool, cool. Let me just uh, pull up the actual list of PRs because I know we got a bunch of them. Um, these aren't on the project board. Do we want to just <clears throat> really briefly go through them? 
um, initial balances for local setups. You there, Luda? Oh, yeah. Um, do you hear me? Does it not get noise? Uh, so, yeah, this one is just, uh, you know, it's just a key rotation uh, on the Moffat keys uh, that we are using for like, the initial balances. Uh, and the goal here is to provide the mnemonic of the, of the keys so yeah, more things can be done with the initial balances. That's good. Um, do, so it's ready for review then? Yeah. Awesome. Um, private local test and support. Um, Aaron, do you want to talk a little bit about this? Um, sure. So this uh, PR makes a couple of changes that were necessary for um, getting uh, like a reg test miner to work in the Docker compose files in the like local testnet repo. And the, the majority of the changes here are like, there's some like refactoring um, work, which is just refactoring, but there are changes for the latest Bitcoin D. Um, ah. Some of this overlaps with like the changes from Avitra's PR. Um, but uh, others, like there's this change, like there's like a new network command in a new version of Bitcoin D that like based on the issue discussion where everybody that like had their own clients was like screaming about, like you have to ignore this network command. <laughs> oh, fun. Yeah, so that's where like 90% of the changes are. Um, it's Wait, probably ready, <laughs> yeah, so. It's not ready yet, you're saying? Um, I, I would say it's not not ready for review yet, but I'll update it to to ready for review when when it's ready. Um, I'm not sure what changes need to be done here. It just wasn't wasn't intended as a PR to be to be reviewed immediately. So there, there might be some cleanup. What was the um, what was the screaming from again? Uh, so there's like a uh, the the version message in the P2P protocol. Um, yes. They added a new version message, oh. like that. So, and the way that it works is like the Bitcoin node first asks you what your version is in this new format, um, and then if you don't respond, it asks in the old format. But if you get the new message and you disconnect the peer because you think it's invalid, um, if you stall. You stall, yeah. Ah, so this fixes that problem. Yes, this fixes that problem by like changing unrecognized network commands to just pass. Gotcha. Yeah, that makes sense, and that's a good future proofing strategy. Um, epoch initialization. I don't think this is on the board yet either, but this is still a draft status, right? Yeah, this is still a draft. Okay. Um, so. Not really yeah, I think this won't move out of draft until we actually have a plan for the, the POX, the new POX contract. Um, so the Pragma PR will probably merge before this um, because that PR impacts how we want to do the POX initialization. Gotcha. Okay. Um, so this is my PR. It's uh, we talked about it last time in the architecture meeting and, and I don't think we're going to do in gating anymore. So that's, that's a relief in some ways. We're doing pragmas instead. Um, the V3, do you want to talk a bit about this PR, the V2 POX endpoint for MockNet? Uh, yeah. Um, so yeah, basically I ended up kind of following Jude's advice for this like for the second uh, iteration of like this PR um and so I'm basically just waiting for another round of reviews on it oh I see so this is ready for the next round yep yep mm -hmm. ah, cool cool I will re-request myself then
So I, this was uh, from last week. I think we're just waiting for this guy to sign the uh, CLA. The, the CLA. Um, if he doesn't, should we just go ahead and just make the change ourselves? It's just a change in the documentation, so it's not like it's a, a huge thing. Um, so why not? All right, cool. I think that's it for the PRs. Uh, thanks for adding those to the board. Um, in progress, uh, Reed, what, what else has to be done after the, uh, the, the codec refactoring? Um, basically, there's going to have to be another PR to kind of go through the util module to make sure that it doesn't reference um, any of the um, <clears throat> anything in um, chain state, I guess. Um, and then I think there might be a, like still a few considerations, or there definitely are still a few considerations to be made with what we want to do with the dependency and SQLite. Um, so yeah, there's there's definitely one at least one more PR in the pipeline. <laughs> How um, how coupled would you think do you think is the Clarity VM to SQLite? And I guess is that is that a problem? Because last I checked, you can I think you can run SQLite within WebAssembly, can't you? Um, I'm not sure. Uh, that wouldn't surprise me. I, I don't know if it's really a problem. I'm uh, I think we should uh, we should talk about that. <laughs> okay. And that's kind of why like I, that we you know Aaron advised leaving it for the end because he wasn't. I, I think he wasn't really sure if we needed to excise it in the way that I was imagining. Um, well, I, I think either way, like, you know, um, decoupling Clarity VM from SQLite is in and of itself a nice thing, just because we may not be using SQLite forever. Right, right. Yeah, that yeah, makes sense. Unload some of the work for that. Yeah. Um, so status update on 18.05, I have it wired into next and I have it so that in epoch 2.1 um, if a uh, anchor if a POX anchor block arrives that is not affirmed by the uh, majority of prepare phases then it will be ignored um, the only remaining work task on this is to make it so that if the uh, if there are two competing forks of reward of prepare phases that alternate between being the canonical fork and the non-canonical fork uh, we have to make it so that the uh, stack's chain state um, doesn't try to reprocess any blocks. So instead of trying to um, do the naive thing where you just uh, re where you simply mark all the previous sortitions as invalid back to the highest common uh, prepare phase, you would have to instead mark the sortitions as invalid back to the uh, either the high either the highest common prepare phase between two yeah. uh, competing prepare phase histories or the last prepare phase that was processed, whichever one is higher. And that's just yeah. gonna require a bit more legwork. Because right now the system can't uh, reprocess a stacks block. That that would lead to that would lead to many possible ways to to achieve a runtime panic. Um, Aaron, how are we doing on the uh, the pragma approach? Um, progress is is uh, moving along pretty well, actually. Um, Sweet. I have uh, I have all the plumbing and sort of implementation of this done. Um, at this point, I just am trying to um, come up with like a good way to test um, the uh, epoch switch. Um, so yeah, should be, should be able to open a PR for review in the next couple of days. Sounds good. Um, Pavithra, how are we doing on the V1 health endpoint? Um, I think I did most of it um, last Friday. So I am about to start. Actually, I have a small question for this one. Um, so uh, basically there's a function in the peers database called like get initial peers, right? Mm -hmm. But that function is calling get random peers. So I'm wondering, can I just re-implement that function? Because like basically I'm, I saw that that function is only really used for tests right now. So it's not actually checking like is initial equal to one mm -hmm. in the database. It's kind of just like actually selecting random peers instead. Um, instead of removing it, can you just make a separate function and we can talk about removing it later? I, I want to yeah, go yeah. sure. Yeah, I'm yeah, sure. That somewhere. All right, cool. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, 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 I got it. 
Um, minor relevant Prometheus myth. This is just opened, okay. Yes. Um, yeah, so uh, one of the things that's come up, uh, especially related to the uh, like multiple UTXO issue um, that you posted about last week mm -hmm. um, is that miners don't have like a super easy way to like figure out what their current relevant or relative score is. Um, they could do it by like monitoring bug logs, um, but that's kind of painful. Um, and Prometheus metrics are actually uh, the way yeah, yeah. most people seem to want to monitor these kinds of things. So that's what this issue is about. Good. Sure, yeah. um, so this this isn't assigned yet. Are we is this something someone can take on right now, or is it just a backlog? If, if someone has cycles, yeah, this is it's a ready uh, shovel ready project. Okay. Um, I'll just put it to backlog for now, and as soon as someone assigns themselves, we'll put it into in progress. Um, uh, I'd be down to take that one. Oh, okay, awesome. Just uh, open this back up then. Thanks, Pavithra. Um, Clarity reference missing string ASCII and string UTF-8 references for many functions. I think this is a, a documentation issue. Or is this a, um, a functional deficit here? Yeah, I, I think that it's just a uh, documentation issue. Ah. Nifty. I actually didn't even know this. Okay. So, um, yeah. Oh, awesome. Um, any takers or just, just a backlog for now? Is this documentation that exists in this repo or is it um, documentation that's yes. on the docs website? It's in it's the in, inbox. Yeah, it's in the um, it's in this repo. Like it's in the uh, like these these function references are are generated from. Uh, Maybe it's a, a good starter uh, issue for Greg as a way of familiarizing himself. Oh yeah. Jude, Jude and others for context. We have a new team member starting um, next Monday. Yeah. All right. Leave it for also, him. just one like related thing to this. Um, in SIP two. There is also no mention of like the string UTF-8 type. Like there's only mention of buff. Like, I don't know if we want to update that then. Yeah, we probably should update that. SIP2 shouldn't okay. describe all the things. Sure. Um, can you open an issue on the uh, the StacksGov SIPs repository? Sure. Appreciate it, thanks. Okay, I'll put this in the backlog. Um, if, if Greg can take it on, that'd be awesome. Um, stacks decrease. I know that Hank had brought this up in a, a separate discussion um, to decrease the amount of stacks tokens you have. I'm guessing that this works uh, similar to stacks increase. It just takes effect the next reward cycle. Um, yes, this is this is something we can explore adding to 2.1. It's just, uh, yeah, it, it's a little tricky. It's it's trickier than increase. Yeah. I don't. Is there any code that expects that that expects the uh, amount of locked stacks to only increase? Well, currently, the whole of BOX. Like, it, it, when you perform your lockup, mm. like it inserts a bunch of entries into a bunch of maps. Right. Um, and so decrease would have to reverse all of those operations. I see. Do, um, 
Yeah, this could open, if, if we're not careful, this could open a DDoS vulnerability, right? Because you could just increase, then decrease to zero, increase, then decrease to zero. Well, you're, you're paying for all of that. Um, so it wouldn't be a DOS vulnerability, but it is like, I think a very sensitive operation, like, especially when it comes to like um, pooling and stuff like that, where like, if you've locked up as part of a pool and then you want to decrease later on, like, we would need to be able to associate like people's current lock states with the pool that locked on their behalf to then go back and decrement the pools, stack them out. Um, there's, there's just like a lot here that, that there isn't an increase. Um, and so, yeah. All right. We'll, we'll get to it when we get to it, I guess. It might be easier just to like have a way to uh, delete your stacking contribution. Yeah. I don't know. Um, anyway, moving on. Uh, mining consolidate UTXOs upon request. So this is uh, related to this next issue here. Admit a warning when there are multiple UTXOs available in exit. Um, I was going back and forth with uh, Ken and Zan about um, a weird set of issues when mining that I guess is also related to Aaron's um, uh, issue here about um, talking about the, uh, the Prometheus monitoring. If it is the case that your miner is spending from a UTXO that still has enough funds to keep mining and you refill your miner. So let's say, for example, I make a UTXO with one Bitcoin in it. I wait for my miner to deplete that to like 0.5 Bitcoin. And then I make another UTXO with one Bitcoin. What will happen is my miner will, my, the, the miner code currently looks at the biggest UTXO available to it and it spends from that. And that right there creates one problem um, because it's spending from a different UTXO the minute I refill it, the, uh, I, I get penalized for not chaining my block commits in the sortition algorithm. So I now get a, a burn value of one for that block. Um, second problem, and this is the problem that actually I've been plaguing uh, Zan and Ken, is that when I deplete that second UTXO back down to 0 0.5 Bitcoin, the miner is now going to flip flop between my old 0.5 Bitcoin UTXO and my new 0.5 BT, my, my new uh, 0.5 Bitcoin UTXO. Um, because again, the miner is picking, is greedily picking the biggest UTXO it can find. And each time it flip flops, it's going to break the chaining and penalize me in the sortition algorithm. So what's been happening over time is as people have been refilling their miners, like I think in, in a, one case, there was four UTXOs in flight this way. They were never, they were, they were constantly burning, but never really winning sortitions because the, um, the median uh, sortition value they had in the, in the burn calculation was one. Since they had like four ones and two burns that were, that were non-trivial burns. Um, so this issue and the issue related to it are um, to try to avoid this problem by either making sure that the miner um, uses the same UTXO over and over, and even, if it mean, even if it's not the biggest UTXO in order to keep the chaining going, um, or make it so that the, my, the user or the mining software uh, will consolidate uh, multiple spendable UTXOs into a single one, also thereby avoiding this problem. Because uh, at the end of the day, we need to make it so that your block commits remain chained through UTXO consumption. Um, a really straightforward way to do this that Aaron pointed out to me was we could just make it so that the uh, miner just sticks with the same UTXO until it's, until it's actually depleted. And then it will pick the next biggest one. Does that all make sense? Yeah, this all makes sense to me, um, at least. And, and I think that like, yeah, this is related to the Prometheus metrics issue just in that I, I think that this took longer for miners to discover because um, than it probably should have. Yeah, um, you know that forum post about the VRF and how we know it's not biased. Um, the fact that this was happening behind the scenes was what had caused us to call into question that and to look at it in more detail because we did see miners repeatedly burning the right amounts and they just weren't winning as much as they would have we would have thought they would have won and it was yeah. due to this chaining flip-flopping yeah vrf is fine um it's just <clears throat> you got to chain your utxos 
how complex is this to fix and, and or risky? I mean, it, it, it seems like something we should try and prioritize sooner rather than later, right? So the simplest case, I think the simplest fix is you emit a warning if there's multiple UTXOs. So that then at least, you know, the, the user has the chance to go and consolidate them first with their wallet. And the second easy, the second like low hanging fruit here is we just make it so that uh, when the miner goes and tries to go build a new block commit, it, um, it keeps using the same UTXO that it has used in the past ones, even if it's no longer the biggest. I see. Are there some workarounds that we can provide to miners that they can run out of band? Um, you know, like some easy script to consolidate the UTXOs? That would really depend on their, um, on their wallet. Like I think wallets let you consolidate UTXOs these days. So as long as they can turn that into a Bitcoin, as long as they can put their Bitcoin into a Bitcoin wallet, they can just do that. Uh, we could give them a script. Uh, difficulty with that though, is we don't want to like, you know, make the, make a gigantic transaction that spends a whole bunch of dust UTXOs. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think that the, the answer is to import their private key into something like Electrum yeah. to consolidate their UTXOs. Like, uh, I, I don't I don't think any of us should be in the business of like writing Bitcoin scripts. They're like, like there's so many pitfalls and just like anything we come up with will probably have no visibility to the script runner. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's so warning sounds good. Um yeah. uh, as a first step. Maybe we can even go further and make it like a configuration thing that by default, um if there are like multiple UTXOs and the current miner, you know, we know we'll have this kind of behavior that, that we can even have a config setting that allows miners to say, you know, if they end up in a situation where there are these multiple UTXOs, the miner just doesn't make progress or it crashes immediately until they consolidate. That's what, a, that's what the second issue says, emit a warning and crash. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The, I, it also could be something like a four line change where like currently the way that we fetch UTXOs is like we fetch UTXOs and then sort them by size. Um, if instead we fetched UTXOs and sorted them by recency, so that the most recent UTXO produced was at the top, like this problem would go away. Um, because you would always do the right chaining. Um, and that seems like a pretty low risk um, approach. Uh, so like we could ship a patch probably pretty quickly if we thought that this was like worth um, a hot fix. I I did, I did warn in the uh, mining channel, like, hey, everyone, you really should be reconsolidating your UTXOs when you fill up. And I know that Zan is working on a, a wiki right now for miners, and that's going to be a prominent item in there. Um, I think the people who mine, as long as we can like make sure that people who start mining at least know to do this, I don't think we need to really worry too much about doing a hot fix. Um, but that's just my opinion. Like, I'm, I don't want to mine myself, so I'm not sure how big of a a pain point this is going to be. Like we're due to make a release in a few weeks anyway for the for the for May. So we might as well just I think we, I think we could probably afford to wait till then. Yeah, I, I tend to agree. Um, there's like a remediation available to people. It's just like making them aware of it. So yeah. All right, um, I can go ahead and, I don't know if we should try to make it so that miners try to consolidate by themselves. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and say, probably a bad idea, but admitting a warning should be good. Wait, so I have a question. So right now, if someone switches to like another, using another UTXO, does that like automatically break their chain? It does. 
Yeah. Because to the uh, to the network, it looks like you went offline and came back on with a different set of keys. So, Aaron, this is the um, this is the issue you talked about earlier, right? The uh, need the need to reset the miner if the uh, RBF logic because the RBF logic doesn't re stay allowed sending transactions. Um, sorry, can you repeat that? Sorry, this is the issue you were talking about earlier, right? With yeah, Jessica. yeah. Okay. Um, we can probably ship that in the same when the same release then that fixes this mining problem. Yeah, I agree. This is also, I, I think, not hot fix. Um, yeah. Because restarting your node resolves the issue. Yep. Yeah. Um, I'll save the 2.1 for the next phase of the meeting. Um, panic on termination request. It uh, looks like Friedrich discovered a bug uh, where I guess he hit control C and it led to a uh, unable to get burn chain tip coordinator closed error here. Is there any progress on this? Um, I, I think Ludo suggested that this was like a um, like a misconfiguration between the event dispatcher, like the way that the setup was being stop um that like the event if you stop if you try to stop the stacks node before you stop the event observer or maybe it's the reverse i don't know <laughs> um but there's a specific order that you need to stop the event observer mm -hmm. and the the node itself um and if you don't do it right you get this uh, panic Okay, less intelligence for us to just remember there. Um, moving on to just the work streams here. Um, I opened an issue last week um, to create an extension contract to determine, I think this is just part of what Frieger reported, like to determine whether or not an address is a standard address and possibly also to give you the version byte. Um, any other changes in the 2.1 work streams? Um, I know I'm working on 1805, which is part of the 2.1 work stream now, and Aaron has a uh, version via Pragmas. Uh, Reed, do you have any progress on runtime costs? No, I haven't really had much of a chance to take a look at this yet. All right. All right, anything else to report on 2.1? All righty, um, discussion items. I see that DeWalker wants us to review the uh, stale issues. Yeah, so just for context here, um, you know, every so often we have issues that go stale and then they're further closed. Uh, often I will look at an issue and, and I will think that, you know, we, this should probably not be still, we probably still need this. Um, but then I forget to kind of go back and update. And so I just wanted to, you know, see as a group, if you want to spend like five, 10 minutes, just quickly going over this list, uh, and reopening issues that are still relevant. Um, and, you know, just, just quickly talking through, so we're not missing anything. Sure. Um, Having detailed assertion tests for cost tracking. I think we kind of do this, don't we? Um, we yes, uh, for, for some level of detail. Um, <laughs> yes, for some level of detail. <laughs> That's fine. If, if we're doing it, then I think we can just mark it, yes. say that this is done, sufficiently yeah. done for now and close it. Yeah, it's, it did not delay the launch of Stacks 2.0. <laughs> like, no, it did not. <laughs> um, oh, that's closed. Cool. We don't have to worry about that. Anti-entry protocol for unconfirmed microblocks. Uh, this hasn't been a problem in practice. I don't know. I mean, I'm content to just close it and just you know open it again if it becomes a problem. Sure, okay. that's fine. Uh, can you close it with that note? Sorry. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yes.
All right, um, V1, V2 upgrade combined with two step stacks, 1.0 export. Well, this clearly worked, so we can just close this. Point I was already live. Unable to compile testnet on Rust and Windows 10. I mean, we build for Windows 10 already, right? So can we just close this? Because um, uh, Harini even says she was able to get the Windows machine built with a yes. Base. Um, S term dependency. I think we actually did this. So, all right. Um, incorrect unused assignments warning at compile time. Oh yeah, that's done. This is no longer. Oh, well, it's closed. Sorry, I should just look at open issues. My bad. Well, I the, the reason I use this filter is because I think there are some issues that have gone stale and were subsequently marked closed that we may want to reopen, which is why I didn't apply the filter. We could review them separately, so we could just filter out open issues and then go make another pass through closed issues. Yeah, let's just quickly do that. Okay, they're all closed, so that's encouraging. Um, I don't know, we can just look at the titles if anything springs to mind. Uh, miners should mine off of the previous epoch in most cases. I mean, yes, we've been doing a pretty good job of that recently. Even even with flash blocks, we've been doing a pretty good job of that. So I think they should stay closed. Clarity functions allow multiple expressions. Um, it's hard fork, so uh, so if we yeah. did revisit that, it would have to be two point one. Yes, um, and I, it, it's not that painful for people to just write again. Yeah, I agree. Um, map entry API returns none data for non existing contracts. Um, not a bug. I think bug. we had. Or 404. I mean, it seems to be closed anyway, so. So it looks like. Never fixed. Looks like it was a bug. I don't know if it was ever fixed or not. Uh -oh. but looks like the bug was actually there. Yeah. Okay. Reopen then. Um, slow response on RPC endpoints with high block height. Yeah, last question I had is, is this still happening and haven't heard back since? Well, I think at this point, our mainnet is longer than any prior testnet, including, I think, the longest Krypton chain. So. Um, so I would say yeah, no, maybe not a problem, or at least none that has manifested yet. Clarity symbols can't start with U in a digit. Um, I don't think that's anywhere in our 3.1 work stream, so just leave it closed. Yes. Uh, refactor TX log is runtime configurable option. That happened. Um, homebrew setup. Anyone use homebrew? Many people, but it probably won't fix. Yeah. 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 Which uh, ticket is this, Jude? Uh, what's up? It's a, um, it's a closed, closed ticket. It's 13, 1369. 1369, okay. Uh, take a, I'm going to take a, a quick look at it, see if there's anything I can add here, but you know, if it's not worth it, I won't do anything. All right. I don't use a Mac, so I can't really... I can't yeah, I, I think that the, um, that the ARM64 builds are probably... Uh, more pressing Mac related build. Got to get that M1 goodness. Yeah. More efficient descendant of POX anchor check and certification evaluation. Um, I don't know, Aaron, I think I don't, this is 01 no matter what you do because you stop looking after you reach the end of the reward cycle. Um. Yeah, um, I, like this isn't an issue in, in in practice. Like I think that it, this is just like um, 
it, it's just like a reference for like if that if that de descendant of POX anchor check ever becomes really slow, like we know that there's room for um, a more efficient handling. Um, All righty. Well, if, if it becomes a problem, we'll just open it again. Yeah. Implement local variable lookups with global map. I'm not quite sure what's being asked here. Oh, this is about shadowing. Um, is this going to be something we have to fix in 2.1? Oh. No, this is uh, just an efficiency. OK. Like the interpreter itself uses um, chained contexts in yep. order to handle lets. Like when you do a let binding, um, it just creates a context and then references a parent context. And because of that, variable lookups um, are O of n, depending on how deep your context is. Um, do but we, we don't need to do that uh, because we disallow shadowing. Yeah. Do we um, do we charge for the the context depth in, in yes. less? We do. Yeah. So maybe. At least I'm. At least I'm pretty sure we do. We might not. It might be one of those things because we do have a maximum context depth. Right. It might be one of the things that we said that this is just like a constant because like the maximum context depth depth is like 32. Yeah, exactly. Like, I don't think people should be penalized for having, I mean, making a new context might cost something, but like looking up a variable in, a, in an outer context, I don't think should be more expensive inherently. Right. Yeah. Um, automatic core dump on panic. Um, I'm not sure if we do this or not. It's not really important, I don't think. Um, it hasn't become a problem. We just get the stack trace. Uh, retain invalid blocks for use for chain replay diagnostics. We do that now. Um, it took a while, but we actually fixed that in a separate issue. Um, test send and receive, connection send receive no longer fails intermittently as far as I can tell. Or at least it hasn't been a problem for months and months. Um, chain tip to mempool transactions sent to the sidecar. I think we did that. It's part of the uh, mes messaging there. Mind block command to clarity bin. Um, is clarity bin still a thing? I think we already do this anyway. In clarity it, CLI is already It is still a thing. Um, clarity CLI is a thing, but is clarity bin a thing? Oh, I, I think that that's what this is referring to. Ah. I mean, sure, like it would be nice to be able to deploy multiple contracts and do multiple contract calls within the context of a single block. I think is what's being asked here. I don't know. I think this is something we could do. Should I just go ahead and reopen it? Like for testing purposes? I don't know. I feel like we have a lot of too many CLIs and confusion around tooling anyway. So I'm hesitant to add more things without sort of consolidating or simplifying further first. I agree. All right. Um, yeah, the Clarity CLI is something that we should try to remove, <laughs> probably. <laughs> should we have an issue for that? Uh, not yet. I, I think that it's more of like a, a project. Um, what would we replace it with? Um, I think that's the that's the question, right? Like we need question. to. <laughs> um, I think that there are many candidates. Like having a having the VM being able to evaluate and store state for clarity contracts. Um, I know that that's leveraged both in our in the Clarity JS SDK as well as in Clarinet, and yes. I know well, I use it for testing my contracts in the well, past. Clarinet is standalone; it's its own build. Like Clarinet could be the replacement for Clarity CLI. All right, as long as it does everything. Yeah. Um, destructuring variable binding and clarity. 
Uh, I don't think we're doing this. No. The periodic uh, map function in Clarity. This was implemented. Oh, great. Um, stacking limit changes, tiers and longer time intervals. I think that we debated this to death and decided no, what we're doing now is fine. Yeah. Periodic numeric comparison operators. I think we decided that was a bad idea. Yes. Um, stress test clarity on memory. Um, this was done. Um, okay. Yeah, this was done as part of our uh, security reviews. Awesome. Uh, variable expansion in config.toml or additional command line options. Oh, I see. This is for like a uh, shell expansion. Are there still any um, specific things you want from this, Jay Wiley? No, I mean, it's something that I think would be nice to have. Um, but again, uh, there's nothing specific that's outside of the ticket or issue. Okay. Let's see, specify maximum block size, that's done. Principles should not start with a quote. I think we decided, no, they should start with a quote. Um, RPC endpoint for querying and bulk downloading the mempool that has not been a pressing need that we've had. So I just let it lapse. RPC endpoint for making a block template. Um, this is part of separating the minor logic out of the node itself, which I think is a, a much bigger project. But um, I know that Pascal was working on this at some point. So I guess that would like th this, like this issue, both of these issues here are related to that. So wh wherever that project goes, like these two things will be solved by way of solving that. Um, yeah, I don't know if Pascal is actively working on it. Um, and I would imagine that he's probably busier with Swapper and other things. Oh. So if, um, I, I do think it, it's, um, I do think it, it'll be good to push that project to the finish line somehow, I think allowing people to spin up their own miners easily, like I think would be a good capability to have. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I, I don't have good ideas on how we can actually make progress on that uh, given everything else. Right. I mean, I'm happy to have these reopened, but perhaps only once we uh, have a, a bigger project tracking, separating out the miner code from the node. Agreed, yeah. Uh, this is done, uploading a mind block. Um, partial tuple updates to maps. I think we did that with merge. Uh, literal shorthand notation or for records. I don't know. I don't think we're doing that. Chain silently hangs when, when events URL, events observer URL has protocol. I think we fixed that. Or we just punted on it saying it wasn't a problem. Yeah. Set block reward maturity period to be at least the length of the POX registration window. Well, we call it the prepare phase window now, but um, this is actually done. So we're good there. The prepare phase is 100 blocks long. Um, backwards compatible API layer for BNS stacks that's being handled by the sidecar already. So it's basically done. Um, disambiguate structs with a naming convention. Um, this is just like an as we're going along, try to make things a little bit easier to name. Um, inconsistent typing between list definition and asmax len. I'm not sure what this is. Um, oh, it's int. Okay. Yeah. Um, the the type specification, like when you specify a type in Clarity, uh, like the length is always an int. Like it, you don't have to preface it with a u. I see. Uh, which creates some cognitive dissonance with lengths are unsigned integers. I have noticed this. Um, is it a big enough problem to fix in 2.1? Uh, so the conclusion in this was that we should wait to do anything on this, including with the, the other issue related to this that like you can't have a variable that starts with you and a number uh -huh. in the legal variable name is that really what we should be doing is the integer subtyping uh, um, yeah. implementation. And so I think that if at a future date, like we want to solve this, like clarity version three or something, um, then we should 
solve it through that approach. Sounds good. The longer we wait on this, the more painful it will be to change it. But I guess that's not really a problem. No, well, not really. If we have these pragmas. Like, no, I mean, like for all the other documentation and example code, it's like the Python 2 to Python 3 switch. I mean, <laughs> I mean, not maybe that's maybe really, really ambitious way of saying it, but like I'm just saying, like the, um, the longer people wait to get used to the current way of things, even if it's war, <clears throat> even if it's warty and, and ugly, the, the harder it will be for them to change later on just because it's what they're used to. Yes, though this would be a change that could, like, it, it could be like a non breaking, like a non backwards incompatible change. That's true. You could just update as max len to take either an int or a u int. No, just like integer literals in the language can be specified with a started u or not becomes meaningless um, because the language is able to conclude which integer type you're referring to. Yep, that's true. Map insert with combined tuple record. I think we kind of fixed this with merge. Yeah. Mod should calculate modulo. Does it not do this? Yeah. So it, it calculates the remainder. And then not all languages define mod the same. Okay. So we have our own definition of mod, and that's correct. Fine. Okay. Um, pass on wording for AST analysis errors. Is this done? Uh, like if you get an analysis error, does it give you the reason why? It gives you a reason why. It's not always the best error message, but like, you know, some helpful things have occurred. Um, like changes have been made at some point. I don't think that we should reopen this issue. No, that's good enough for, for this then. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like, you know, things like, do you have a misplaced comma in your record? Doesn't really tell you the line number, for example. I think it tells you the line number, but it might not say you have a misplaced comma. It would say something like cannot parse the rest. <laughs> like, um, definitely improvements can be made there, but like we should have just like specific examples. Like if someone's like this contract failed and it took me like an hour to figure out why it failed to parse, like that would be more helpful than I think re reopening this issue. Agreed. Um, define cost. Smart, uh, define smart contract addresses with define constant. I think we can do this already. Right? Um, no, I, we can't. No. Oh, we have to have literals everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Oh well. Unless you're unless you're using a trait. Uh, should we change this in two point one? Um. I mean, of all the things that have come up, it doesn't seem like the thing that people are really clamoring for. So. I mean, yeah, add it to a right. long list of <laughs> suggested improvements if you get yeah, to it. Sounds like it. All right. Um, different dif different constant definitions for values, no net analysis time versus runtime. This is related. All right. Um, all non dev HTTP use cases should use our. Okay, yeah, that's just ongoing refactoring work. That's just can we get rid of async h1 and other things? Um, allow clients to call any clarity function on just read only functions. We've made some progress on this. Um, I don't think we've gotten to the point where you can call define public functions though, but that's relatively straightforward to do. Even if they had like mutations, we just wouldn't materialize the mutations. Uh, I thought this was merged with like Pascal's PR. No. Pascal had like a long open PR. He did, but he was explicitly setting the allowed execution cost right bandwidth to zero. Oh, I see. Gotcha. So it's trivial to change it from there. Um, the reason we set it to zero is because I think he wanted to call like trait implementations, which have to be public. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. Um, I can go ahead and reopen this. Because I do think it is something we will want to do. Sure. We're also um, at time, so yeah. um, I don't know if we want to do the rest of this async. Uh, I would say one thing that might be useful is um, we went through a bunch of issues that 
are still marked as stale, but have actually been addressed. And, and I think for people who are maybe looking back at some of these issues, it's not always obvious if something that has been marked stale was actually fixed or not. Um, so, so yeah, if people want to kind of just use this query um, and maybe quickly go through the first two pages that you just ran through uh, and the ones that are actually addressed, maybe even just removing the stain label might be a good signal that you know they were closed, meaning that they were done or otherwise resolved, not just that they languished and you know marked as closed because they were stale. Yeah, and also like if you see anything that's stale that was closed due to being stale that isn't done that you think is useful, like feel free to re-raise it like in Discord or something we can talk through. Yeah. Like that one I just opened, for example. All right. Yeah. Um, if there's nothing else, um, we can go ahead and adjourn because I know that we're at time. Thanks for being patient and working working with us through the, the long stay of backlog here. Thanks all. Yep. Yeah, stop and record. Thanks. Cheers. Cheers.